My dudes, we are back. I got the new webcam. Maybe it's looking a little bit better here. You know? Um, today, I want to talk about the coolest scientific development uh, in, you know, several decades here on planet Earth. And probably one of the greatest technological achievements uh, humanity has ever achieved. We are talking about the James Webb Telescope which was recently launched into space at long last. It's a project that NASA has been working on um, for since 1996. Okay. Now, I am super hyped about this project. I've been following it for a long time. And I want to tell you guys about the coolest details about this telescope and kind of put into context just how amazing this is going to be for everyone on Earth. Check this out. Now, let, let's go back. Let's start with the Hubble telescope. Everybody knows the Hubble telescope, the, the most famous telescope, the most iconic space images, revolutionized our understanding of space, and we the things that we saw were unlike anything before. Now, the Hubble was um, launched in 1990, so this, I mean, what technology from 1990 is relevant in our lives today? I mean, what, like... 1990 people were watching tv on like box big ass boxes i mean the world was just so different then um so let's take a look at some of the most famous images from our dear old hubble uh, telescope this you you might recognize some of these i've seen these you know deep space nebulas stars being born stars dying uh i'm just incredible Incredible photos. Um, <clears throat> the Pillars of Creation. This one is very iconic. Uh, it's a nebula that shows the ga glowing gases, basically uh, dust and gas, forming a new star. Okay, this is what's going on out there. And what's crazy when you look at photos of like this, you don't realize the whole the scope of this thing like top to bottom is potentially hundreds of light years so while it looks like a fun little cloud this is a monster a cosmic monster out there um this one i wanted to show specifically um this one here is probably the most famous image of the of the Hubble telescope that's ever taken. The backstory on this is incredible. What happened was they found a dark, in insignificant spot in space. And they said, let's point the telescope at this completely insignificant, seemingly empty portion of space for like 10 days and uh, see see what happens. Okay. You know, it was kind of a wild experiment, and they didn't expect anything. And what resulted was one of the most important images we've ever captured of the night sky. You can see here, this is what they captured. This tiny little area here at that where the arrow's pointing. It says, the area of the sky observed in the Hubble Ultra Deep Field View has been compared to the area you would see through an 8-foot soda straw. An 8-foot? An eight foot soda straw? Why would they say that? Why does it have to be an eight foot soda straw? Can it just be a normal soda straw? I guess it's more narrow if it's eight feet. This is a hard analogy to follow, guys. Eight foot soda straws. Okay, I'm going to use my imagination. It's a small hole. Okay. And the result of this tiny little pinprick in the sky was these photos. These photos containing tens of thousands of unknown galaxies in the farthest reaches of space. It's incredible. And the reason I'm telling you guys all this is to basically, um, in a, as, as a way to explain just how powerful the James Webb telescope is and why everyone should be excited. It's a hundred times more powerful than the Hubble telescope. It costs $10 billion. They've been building this telescope since 1996. Like I said, the Hubble, the Hubble was launched in 1990. This project started in 1996 because they're like, we need to see deeper. Deeper! <clears throat> yes. 
Um, so this is extremely exciting stuff. You know, they're sending it out there to basically find alien life straight up. They're going to be able to figure, look at planets. This thing is so powerful. They'll be able to look at distant planets and know based on the chem the composition of the planet and the atmosphere, like how much methane is in the atmosphere, how much CO2 is in the atmosphere, like if there's likely going to be life living on that planet. That's how this thing can see a freaking this thing could see a butthole hair. <clears throat> Dude, this thing could could sniff a butthole hair on your mom's crack on the moon, dude. Whatever that means. It's powerful. Okay. I say it costs $10 billion? Probably. Here it is. It's been launched into space. It's successfully deployed everything. The great news about this thing is that it was projected to last only 10 years with its energy source, but because it was performed uh, so efficiently, it's expected now to last 20 years, bruh. Check this shit out. So cool. Um, let me make sure you guys can see all this. So this is tracking its progress through space. Now, <clears throat> oh my God, it's so small. I want you guys to see the L2 here. Okay, there it is. So here we go. Right now, it is... This thing is not cooperating. Okay, great. This is what I want you guys to see. Here's Earth. Here's the moon. Okay, the Hubble telescope was in, like, low ob orbit of the Earth. So it was somewhere around here, you know. This one is going deep into, deep into space. So if something goes wrong, like the Hubble telescope was actually serviced somewhat frequently by astronauts going up there and making repairs, making upgrades. This one is going where no man has gone before, deep, deep into space. Um, as you can see, well past the moon, way, way past the moon, um, going to an area called the L2 zone. And this is super interesting. The L2 zone is where there's like a perfect a perfect equi equilibrium between the sun and the earth and the moon. There's a special place in space where there's a gravitational equilibrium. And the satellite is able to stay in a fixed position in space. This is insane, you guys. This is crazy freaking math. It's the L2 zone, my dudes. And what this um, actually enables the Hubble telescope to do is, first of all, it has this incredible um, sun shield, this massive sun shield. Let me show you pictures. James Webb telescope. Um, I have videos and stuff I want to show you guys, but as I'm explaining, let me show you what this thing looks like. This is the craziest thing we have ever sent into space, okay? Look at us. Look at us earthlings now. We are sending crap into space that we could never have dreamed of. You know? Check this thing out, okay? So they have these incredible sun shields right here. And because it's in a fixed position, it's able to block the radiation, the heat from the sun, the earth, and the moon without moving, right? So that's really important. And then the other thing is the Hubble, the Hella, the Hub, the Hella, Hubble telescope rotated the earth. So it could only focus on certain objects for a limited amount of time. But this one is able to stay focused in space. Um, and to stay super cooled at the same time, which, which is what it actually needs to do. Here it is, by the way. i just show you some pictures. Look at this. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. Um, here it is being packed up in the rocket. Okay, Ethan, can you not find, like, the tiniest, weirdest photos? Here, I have videos I want to show you guys. But let me explain this first. So, look at this. The hot side, because of this solar shield, 130 degrees, bro. Who knew space was so hot? 
I didn't. Um, and then the cold side, which is like, you know, I don't know, 15 feet separated, minus one, 330, minus 330 degrees. Um, okay. That, and I actually want the telescope to be that cold. They need it to be that cold because what it does, it has, it measures ultraviolet light. And if the telescope isn't like close to absolute zero degrees, you know, absolute nothing in terms of heat, it'll pick up its own heat. And these instruments are so sensitive, it will actually interfere with their ability to look at light so far away. So it cannot have like any heat going on at all. So that's the great need to keep the instrument so cool. Yeah, it's it's almost to the L2, so God bless, eh? Pretty cool stuff. It says it's traveling 84% there. Uh, it's cruising at a quarter of a mile per second. That's pretty fast, but have you seen me do a mile? 15-minute mile right here, boys. Boys and girls. Ladies. Can your man do a 15 minute mile? Didn't think so. Um, yeah. So let's watch some videos because this shit's probably boring for you guys. I'm trying to explain. My dumb ass trying to explain high science. Here's a video of how it unfolded in space. It's super interesting. Check this out. So the telescope and the instruments are exposed to cold space. The Webb Telescope is the most difficult scientific project we've ever undertaken. It's got to unfold itself in space. James Webb is obviously not going to fit on the top of a rocket. So something that's that big has to be folded. <coughs> a consequence of this uh, folding up is that we have to be able to do the deployment in orbit. Yeah, it's quite big. And so these plate, what you see here, let me explain because the, obviously the science, I obviously know more than these scientists. Uh, so let me step in here to explain a minute. These are pristine gold plated, perfect glass hexagons. And um, the technology, I mean, this is a, ten, there went $9 billion into the actual construction itself. The technology behind this is incredible. And what they can do when they're looking at distant galaxies is each one of those hexagons can be moved ever so slightly to get a perfect lock on the most distant uh, objects. So thank you. I'll let the scientists take it from here. Uh, I'll, I'll be sure to step in when they start slacking. Once we're above the atmosphere, the fairing drops away and James Webb is then sitting alone on top of the rocket, shooting towards the moon and out to its final orbit. <clears throat> the solar panels have to come out very quickly to power it. Over the next 29 days, there's a whole sequence of activities that happen. The very large sun shield has to be pulled out and be separated, and that is an amazingly intricate series of steps. Unlike Hubble, we are not orbiting the Earth. We're going straight out a million miles where no man has gone before. So servicing is not an option for us. All the release mechanisms have to work. If they don't deploy, we're, we've had a bad day. We allow the telescope to cool down and the instruments to cool down, and then we start focusing them. That takes altogether six months to get all of it. Boring that. nerd! I'll take back over. Anyway, as you can see, I don't remember what specifically I wanted to show you guys about this clip. I think just how it deploys it, uh, you know, in, in space. Very cool. Uh, here's the end, kind of when they talk about some of the some of their missions. Um, I feel confident check this out. that my grandchildren will be able to look up in the sky and point to a star and say, there's life. I think that's going to be a moment more <clears throat> profound than our Copernican moment that took Earth out of the center of the universe. It's going to put an end to cosmic loneliness. It's going to fundamentally change 
what we see when we look up in the night sky. So these, these, these people are straight up. We are going to find aliens with this thing. We are going to find extraterrestrial life and confirm it with this thing. Basically, the main, the main purposes of this telescope is to look back at early stars and how they formed and to do um, uh, research on Earth-like planets that can support life and to analyze the planets and their atmospheres to try to find, uh, study life outside, outside of Earth. Um, the other, there, the other thing is like with the Hubble telescope, you really don't know what to expect. You really don't know what you're going to find with an instrument this powerful and the Hubble being a hundred times more powerful or the James Webb being a hundred times more powerful than the Hubble. I'm sure that this is just going to be one of the most exciting times to be a human being on this earth. Uh, the things that we are going to see on this thing are going to be breathtaking and amazing, and I just can't wait to see what comes out of it. Um, and uh, was there something else? Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell you guys, it's really cool how, um, so this is going to be in operation for 20 years, and the way that they, they don't just look randomly through space, right? They have a system of, of figuring out uh, what to do with this thing, and what they do is they have research organizations schools studies professors whatever basically anyone could submit a proposal for how to use this telescope and the best proposals are gonna you know get their time with the telescope which is really cool i love the democratization basically the best ideas get to get out there and test their theories and see whatever they want and i thought that was really cool there's applications have are already being vetted and projects lined up. I think the first images are going to start coming out um, in May or something of, of uh, this year because it takes so long to fine-tune all the instruments. But I wanted to share my excitement with this project for you guys. Um, this is going to be just freaking fascinating, phenomenal, incredible, and uh, it's exciting, man, you know? It's it's pretty amazing that that uh, our dumbass incompetent government can actually muster ten billion for this thing. How much does one F fifteen cost? Like ten billion dollars? Like legit? This is cool as hell, man. Can we do more of this, please, humanity? How much does what is the F fifteen? How much does an F fifteen cost? What's the most like cutting? Wait, there's an F sixteen. Okay, y'all. <sighs> We are so doomed as a species. I want to say this, okay? Um, one F-16 fighter jet costs two and a half billion dollars. This James Webb almost didn't get funded. It cost ten billion dollars. The F-16s. Yo! When are we going to stop sending, spending so much money on the military? That's not the point of this video. But just imagine, my dudes. Just imagine. See you in uh see you in space, cowgirls and boys. <laughs>